Hello, hello, it's Audra here again, and we are very deep into your video training series. Pretty intense, pretty comprehensive. Um, seven different lessons. We are on lesson seven today. And uh, this one is a big one, a big secret to increasing your metabolism, losing weight and shape shift in your body that has absolutely nothing to do with torturous exercise or ridiculous diets or any of that other stupid stuff. And that's what we're going to dig into. Specifically, I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Pleasure, that is what I am talking about. In fact, I uh, before I recorded this video, I had a little piece of my favorite organic dark chocolate bar to savor and put on my tongue and let it melt and take a deep breath in to help me get into relaxation response. And I thought, oh, perfect state of being to talk about pleasure. And that is what I want to ask you today. I want to ask, what is your relationship to pleasure? I ask this because our relationship with pleasure profoundly informs the health of our relationship we have with food and the health and relationship we have with our own body. You see, this idea of pleasure, this concept of pleasure, we've adopted. We've adopted the sense and the understanding of pleasure from our family from our religion, and from our culture. And when it comes to pleasure, oftentimes we're very confused and we have, uh, I'd say, a skewed concept of pleasure. We're uncertain about it and we definitely have mixed feelings and mixed messages inside of ourselves about pleasure. So because of this, <clears throat> I think that um, let's just turn to the good old dictionary. Let's talk about what pleasure is. So Pleasure describes a broad class of mental states that humans and other animals experience as positive, enjoyable, or worth seeking. It includes more specific mental states such as happiness, entertainment, enjoyment, ecstasy, and euphoria. In psychology, the pleasure principle describes pleasure as a positive feedback mechanism, motivating the organism to recreate in the future the situation which it has just found pleasurable. According to this theory, organisms are similarly motivated to avoid situations that have caused pain in the past. Okay, look, so every organism on the planet, we are all programmed and hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain at our absolute most primitive level of the nervous system. Okay. It is hardwired in us. It is a part of it. So for us to deny pleasure, for us to deny that this is such a huge part of the human experience is to deny a part of yourself. It's to deny, um, reality. Really. It's you choosing to not live in reality. So tell me <clears throat> how much pleasure did you derive out of the last diet you were on? Hmm? Lots of pleasure there, huh? How much pleasure do you derive out of, you know, the last video that we, um, the, the seven secrets video number six, I just, that hopefully you listened to yesterday was about exercise. And I gave a whole conversation about clients who hate their body. They're so upset. They have all this body fat on them, an extra 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. And so they, this deep thing inside of them says, well, I'm just going to go run a marathon. So they sign up for a marathon and the truth is they don't even really like running. You know, I call that heroic exercise. It's like taking this big stand to show how tough you are. Even though you've been sitting on the couch for the last two years, now I'm going to go from a couch to running a marathon and you don't even like to run. Tell me how pleasurable would every single one of those runs be if you don't even like it, if it doesn't actually bring you pleasure. You know, a funny story about food for me, um, I think celery, a lot of people like celery a lot. But I have a very specific um, connection with celery and dieting. I mean, back from when I was a teenager, I have that connection of celery is a diet food. And so you will never see me eat celery. I mean, hardly ever. Maybe somebody could get me to eat it if they put a boatload of cheese on it or some peanut butter. But even then, I might take a bite and go, thanks, that was great, but no thanks. I, I know, but this is my point, though. It absolutely has the opposite effect of pleasure for me and therefore it reminds me of pain and therefore I avoid the situation, right? So let's talk a little bit about the science of pleasure. So here we go. When your digestive system feels nutritionally satisfied, it sends pleasure chemicals to evoke a pleasure response in the body, okay? 
So specifically endorphins are released, serotonin are released, and it is, it's like this, ah, oh, this feeling of now I'm finished. This is a satisfaction type feeling. And the process is self-fulfilling and self-finishing. Okay, so when you fully feel a pleasure all the way through your body, your body will feel complete. And I'm going to say that again, it's a self-fulfilling and self-finishing process. Okay, so when you fully feel a pleasure all the way through your entire being, your whole body, you will have a sense of completeness, a sense of, ah, oh, now I'm finished. You know, I'm sitting here talking and truth be told, I think we can all relate as this sounds clearly like an orgasm. This has a very orgasmic quality. When you allow yourself to feel the pleasure of an orgasm all the way through your body, you will have a sense and a feeling of completeness. That is pleasure science. Once you allow yourself to feel it, feel it all the way through, it finishes. Okay. Now, on the other hand, when we fail to fully be there for a pleasurable experience, then we've completely missed the experience of what that pleasure is and the mind body will continue to nag and nag and nag until you return to the pleasure. So we keep returning over and over and over again to try to get and evoke and get the actual sense of satisfaction that our body needs from that pleasure response that we never got. So an example, you know, what's your favorite treat? What kind of foods do you like? So, you know, I, of course I wrote chocolate cake, ice cream, cookies, you know, what is it? What, what are some favorite treats that you have? And let's, you know, put a couple of examples here. So maybe an example of chocolate cake. Actually, no, I had a client recently talk about carrot cake. So carrot cake, she loves carrot cake. So there's a carrot cake sitting on the counter and, you know, it's obviously a slice is messed up and like a piece has been gone, but it's kind of uneven. So you're going to go even it out. So you get out your knife and you just take a little slice off the side, um, you know, because you're doing your duty, making sure it's a nice clean looking slice that just got taken. So you just have like a little piece and then you put it in your mouth really quick. Don't even put it on a plate. You go throughout your, you know, maybe you're running some errands or doing some chores around the house. And then you go back and you go, well, it's a little, it's a little not, you know, straight on this side. So now I'm going to cut just a little slice off on this side. And then you put it in your mouth and you eat it and you don't even think twice about it. And then you go about, and then the next thing you know, half the cake is gone. And you sat there and ate little pieces off of the cake while you were up and around and running around the house and did not even get to experience the pleasure of what that carrot cake could possibly evoke inside of you in your body. I'm telling you, that is just a shame. And then we wonder why uh, we have to keep going back for servings and back. We never allowed ourselves to fully experience the pleasure of that food, okay? <clears throat> And the truth is, is that there is an innate pleasure in eating. And oftentimes we have deep seated beliefs that if we experience pleasure with food, then we're screwed. We absolutely won't be able to stop. Um, some of us have deep fear that if, uh, that if we follow what our pleasure is, it's going to harm us. And this is one, a tragedy. And again, it goes back to the beginning. I mean, our ideas of pleasure have been ingrained in us uh, through culture, through religion, through our family, through our experiences, and especially around food. And I hear this so much with especially my female clients. And it's just, if I allow myself to like have what it is that I want to have, I'm scared I'll never stop eating. And that is just not the truth when we can learn how to use this ancient process in our body. I mean, pain and pleasure is at the absolute basic primitive level of our nervous system. When we can harness that energy that already exists inside of us and realize the ability to feel the pleasure completely and fully all the way through, then you will get the sense of, oh, satisfied enough, right? So the problem is, is that we have this skewed relationship with pleasure and we feel guilty. So we, we have a weird relationship with pleasure. So then we do something that we think would be pleasurable. We feel guilty, become shameful. We start to hide. We do it in secret. If anybody knows what that's all about, especially in the world of food, which of course leads to finding ways to punish ourselves. Because what do we do when we feel guilty and we feel shameful? All of these things, these are negative emotions and we're now all of a sudden it's this, you know, vicious circle of 
wanting to feel pleasure, feeling guilty about it, and then punishing ourselves for it. And what's the best way that we punish ourselves for doing something we're not supposed to do? Well, let's put ourselves on a strict diet. Whoopsh, you know, hit that whip. Make sure you don't eat anything. And uh, crazy heroic exercise. Well, I hate to run, but I don't care. I'm going to run a marathon. Rawr. You know, that'll show me. And it's like, oh, totally the wrong direction. It's like a downward spiral of hell instead of an upward spiral of pleasurable heaven, okay? So my take on pleasure is that when it comes to food, actually when it comes to almost anything pleasurable, but we're talking about food, we have to invite pleasure in, okay? We have to invite it in. And the more we can do this, the more that we can invite pleasure in, the more we strengthen our yes and no muscles, okay? And if we're afraid of pleasure with food, then basically we're just going to have an extremely hard time using our choosing muscles in order to say yes or no to a food. Now, there are some stipulations here. I highly recommend as you're working through learning about pleasure and sitting down and eating slowly and enjoying and savoring every bite of what you are eating, being in the moment without distractions. One thing I would highly recommend would be to make sure that the quality of the food you were choosing is top notch. And I really mean that. Um, you know, I love ice cream. Do not so much in the winter, but when, as soon as it gets warm out, it is in my mind, it is in my body, I friggin' want some ice cream and I want it now. And I have a, what is it? What's it called? I have a, uh, a, a thing that I do that I love so much here in San Francisco. Buy Right Ice Cream is by far one of my favorite creameries. It's all organic. They make it. There's like four ingredients in all of it. And you can go to the Buy Right Creamery. It's right next to Dolores Park. And granted, you might have to stand in a long line if it's the weekend, but it's so worth it because it's the best effing ice cream on earth. And then I get a scoop of it and I go to the park, which is right there, Dolores Park, and I find a spot and I insanely enjoy the beauty and the warmth of the day and sitting on the grass and then eating the ice cream. The entire experience is, it's just, it's awesome. It's so great. And I don't feel like I need to eat a gallon of it. Because I'm not sitting at home in a cold room having like emotional turmoil and then going back and forth to the fridge. It's a totally different experience. It's a pleasurable experience. I've evoked a pleasure response. That is not the same thing as going to the grocery store and getting like a skinny cow ice cream or some Weight Watchers, you know, 8,000 ingredients filled with preservatives and all sorts of other crap in it. It's not the same thing. So when you can get something of high, high quality, you're going to have a better experience of and nutritionally speaking, just your body will understand it as food and you will get the nutritional pleasure out of it as well. Okay. So that's kind of the stipulation. And then finally, I just want to suggest to you that pleasure will fuel you. It enlightens us. It lightens us up and it can literally change your brain and body chemistry. Pleasure is a powerful tool that when we can learn how to harness it, it will play a huge role in your ability to lose weight in your ability to live life to its fullest, and your ability to keep the weight off instead of all this fluctuation stuff, and in your ability to just live a full life. So how do we start to play with more pleasure? And I gave a couple of great ideas. Now, we already talked about food, but how can you start to play a little bit more with sex, with relaxation and idle time? How many times do we sometimes feel guilty about spending an entire afternoon curled, you know, in a ball reading a great book, uh, or inspired movement, not the kind that you hate to do, not the kind that you're willing your body because you hate the fat on your body. So you're going to go run a marathon, even though you hate to run. No. What, what about inspired movement? You know, for me, it would be, well, you already saw in the last video, I would get on my mountain bike or I'd want to go surfing or I'd, or I'd, you know, go out salsa dancing or something fun like that. So those are the questions I have for you. Make sure you answer them and put them on the blog. I think, I wonder if I can get in there. No, I messed that up. Get on the blog. Here, we'll put that right there. There it is. And uh, and and make that happen. And here, I'll even put it on. It's www.audrabaker.com. And you can see the seven secrets video training series there and make sure that you check this out and add to the community. You know, what can you start to do to create more pleasure in your life? How are you figuring out how to increase your pleasure tolerance around 
the foods that you're eating all the time. Guys, we eat like two, three, four, five times a day. So many opportunities to evoke the pleasure response through food. Okay. All right. We have one more bonus video. It is a, a special video. It's coming to you tomorrow. And it is me live and in color. And very excited to share. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about my philosophy and my own personal story. So very excited to see you live and in color tomorrow. And until then, you guys have a beautiful day.